Okay, minerals. Uh, a lot of times when people think of minerals, they think of semi-precious gems, um, but that's not true. Uh, a mineral is a naturally occurring, inorganic, solid, with a definite crystalline structure and a chemical composition. So that naturally occurring, inorganic, solid, definite crystalline structure and a chemical composition that is what lays out what a mineral is. So a mineral can be a element like lead uh, or carbon, uh, or it can be a compound, but it can't be a mixture. It's got to have a chemical composition. Um, so when we take a look at if a substance is made up of more than made up of molecules of two or more elements, it's a compound. Uh, we just got done talking about that. We went from elements to compounds, and now we're taking a look at minerals, and we'll be going into rocks. The chemical composition of minerals determined by the compounds that it's made up of. Excuse me. And the unique thing is, is if we take and add a, a couple or just a different element, a lot of times the mineral will change drastically. It could change its color. It could change its hardness. It could change a lot of things. And we're not going to get that deep. Um, but uh, I just want to let you know that by just changing a little bit of things in the, in the compound, the mineral itself can change a lot. So if a mineral is composed of only one element, it's called a native element. And that means that you could be walking down the, the street and trip over um, um, some lead. And, you know, that's a native element. So quartz, when we take a look at quartz, it has silicon and oxygen. And if it's a silicate, it's going to have some chemical uh, combination of silicons and oxygens. So all of our minerals are broken up into two categories, silicates and non-silicates. Um, silicates by far are the most um, common. So minerals, they have to be solid. That means they have to have a shape. They're not going to be something that has melted um, or in liquid form. Uh, they have to be inorganic. Um, coal is the weird one. Coal is a rock, but it's not a mineral because it's um, coal is organic. <clears throat> and they have to be naturally occurring. Right now, there are a lot of um, gemstones that are being made in a, a laboratory, so they would actually not be considered a mineral. Um, all minerals have a crystalline structure. Now, some are better than others, uh, but they are going to have a crystalline structure with a repeating pattern. So I kind of talked about this. Uh, we have silicates and non-silicates. All minerals are broken up into silicates and non-silicates. Um, the non-silicates are going to be native elements, halides, sulfides, carb, uh, carbonates, oxides, and sulfides. I'm not expecting you to uh, memorize those or under, you know, I want you to understand that we have silicates and non-silicates. So how can we uh, determine in... Uh, a mineral. A lot of times if we take a look at the look um, that, I'm sorry, the look, the color. A lot of times color isn't all that important. Uh, we have two different minerals here. One is gold uh, and one is fool's gold and not quite for sure if you know but uh, the one on the left here is uh, pyrite, fool's gold, and the one, uh, I'm sorry, this is left the one on the left is pyrite, fool's gold. It's a, uh, uh, an iron ore. And the one on the right is actually gold. And that's how you might find the gold. Uh, hardness. When we take a look at hardness, the hardness is on the Mohs scale. And it goes from 1 to 10, with talc being uh, the softest and diamond being the hardest. Now, once again, this is hardness. Um, but there's also brittle. Diamonds are weird. They're hard. Don't get me wrong. They're very hard, but they're also brittle. 
they can uh, shatter relatively easily um, if you hit them just right. Um, I hadn't been married that long and I have some little baby diamonds in my wedding ring and I was out working moving rocks and I had shattered um, two of my little baby diamonds. So things can be hard, but they can also be brittle. So um, when we take a look at um, hardness, we, we take a look at scratching different things and the fingernail is probably the um, kind of the most common one. The fingernail is gonna come in about 2.5. Um, and we also take a look at glass. Um, glass is gonna come in about six. So a lot of times we say less than two and a half, around two and a half, greater than two and a half, but less than six, around six, and greater than six. Um, and if we were in school, um, this would be done a whole lot different. Unfortunately, this is one of the times of the year that the students really like because you spend most of your time in lab. So your fingernail is between two, two and a half, and glass is six. I don't use a copper penny. Um, other teachers that I've taught with here like using the copper penny, um, but to me it's so close to the fingernail that I don't use it. Okay, luster. We have metallic and non-metallic, and some of these can be really tricky. Metallic, does it look like a metal, or does it look like a rusted metal? Um, if so, that would mean that it's metallic. Everything else is going to be non-metallic. Okay, so for lusters, we have metallic and we have non-metallic. There's a lot of more specific non-metallic lusters, like earthy and soapy and... Um, um, they're not coming to me right now. Density. When I take a look at density, there um, you're going to be doing a gizmos where you're going to be calculating density to help you. But a lot of times I like to look at, oh, you know, like not a big deal or wow, it's really light or whoa, that's really dense. Um, but a lot of times we don't necessarily calculate the true density. Um, it's more of a, how does it feel? And streak. Um, streak is unique because it is how the mineral is rubbed off on a porcelain plate. And a lot of times we can have a mineral that is dark and colored, but will streak red. And sometimes we have some um, red materials that will streak yellow. And a lot of times it is iron that is showing up as red because iron is rust. And a lot of times our yellows will show up as, um, if it streaks yellow, that's gonna tell us that it has sulfur in it. Um, but we don't necessarily do a whole lot with, uh, with those because we're not in class. Cleavage. We have cleavage and we have fracture. And cleavage is how it's going to break. And if it breaks along a flat surface, it has cleavage. And if we were in class, I would explain to you that when I buy minerals, uh, a lot of times they're cut because they're a big sample and they just cut them down. So sometimes the mineral looks like it has a flat surface, but it was cut. Um, but this is cleavage and this is cleavage. This is mica. We have two different types of mica. Um, and this is a, a, a calcite because it's a rhombus. And the unique thing is, is if you were to take and hit that um, calcite with a hammer, it is going to always break in flat, smooth uh, layers that end up with that shape. Fracture, um, it doesn't break evenly. It just kind of breaks. And sometimes things can have bad cleavage. Um, an example of that is going to be uh, gypsum. A lot of times gypsum, you can just see the fine lines in it, but it doesn't break very well. Um, so when we take a look at it, once again, cleavage is gonna break along a flat surface. Fracture is jagged rough. 
density a lot of times is oh that's really low density or a lot of times it's more of a oh that's galena you can tell that that's lead uh, hardness is on the Mohs scale and as we go we'll be taking a look at special properties like magnetism and and some of those so have a great day